There are apparently ten scientific proofs of God that can convince any atheist to start to believe. I've spent the best part of 30 years trying to find these proofs, and in the end, all I had to do was find a video on YouTube. I'm ready to be convinced. Hello, I'm The Skeptic. I watch videos on YouTube that make extraordinary claims, whether that's flat earth or strange conspiracies, but mostly the claim that a god is real, and then explain why I can't accept their position. Before we get into today's video, please do subscribe, hit that bell notification to be alerted for my next video, and drop a like. That would be brilliant. In this God Squad video, Engineering Made Easy has put together a video that discusses 10 scientific proofs of the existence of God. With close to 80,000 subscribers, this channel is gaining momentum, so it must be the truth, right? The opening statement in the video is quite the claim. Take a look for yourself. As always, the link to the main video is in the description. Hi, I am Larith Vasist. In this video, we will see 10 scientific proofs that will make you believe in the existence of God. See? A bold claim. I'm ready to be convinced. Does God really exist has always been a subject of debate. But here I have 10 reasons to convince you that God actually exists. So without wasting time, let's directly come to the point. That would be great! But first let me tell you what are different proofs of existence of God that we are going to discuss here. Number 1. Similar geometrical patterns seen everywhere in the nature indicate a single creator, the God. How? Number 2. Unbelievable complexity of the DNA code and the cell. What? Number 3. We see intelligent design of the creator in everything in the universe. Or you can't explain it or choose not to accept the scientific explanation. And so just put it down to a god. Number four. Similar designs found at the microscopic level of atoms and the planetary system is an indication of God's signature everywhere. Or that the laws of nature are seen everywhere because that's just how things work. Number five. Everything that exists must have a cause. Cause. Therefore, universe had a cause. Rejected. Instead of cause, which theists say must have been caused by something, I'd rather say everything has an explanation. Which was caused by an uncaused identity known as the God. I knew it was coming and I reject it. So can we call this nine scientific proofs for now? Number six. Delicate balance, connection and interdependency that we see in the whole universe is again an indication of one supreme power. Or that everything evolved to make use of the surrounding environment. It may appear interconnected, but really, it's just how life works. Number seven. Fine-tuned universe. An extremely precise nature's physical constants point to a super intelligent creator. No, they don't. They just do for you because you either don't accept the scientific explanation or you don't understand it. So you just say, it must have been God. I can already feel myself getting irritated at this video. And we've got a long way to go. Number eight. The whole universe acts as a very big machine, subdivided into infinite number of smaller machines, which proves that there must be a single mind behind it. Okay, this one is just stupid. Rejected. Let's make it eight proofs. I'm not going near this one because of its ridiculousness. Number nine. Non-physical aspects to human consciousness lead to indirect evidence of God. Oh, they're just getting silly now. That's absolute nonsense and in no way can be demonstrated. So now we're down to seven. Number 10. There must be a supreme power or supreme intelligence that controls and guides all the objects to their final purpose. I mean, at least with the first four or five, there were actual demonstrable sciences that were being squeezed about to try and fit the theist thinking. But this one is just being plucked out of nowhere. Maybe because they just wanted to make it 10 and really struggled. So, okay, this should really be called Maybe We Have Six Scientific Proofs for the Existence of God. But even then we're reaching. Now, let's discuss all of these 10 proofs one by one. You mean six. Number one. Similar geometrical patterns seen everywhere in the nature indicate a single creator, the God. If you look around you, you will find signature of God on different things, even on your body. Have you ever heard about golden ratio and Fibonacci sequence, which is present in many natural things? Actually, if any object is designed using golden ratio or Fibonacci sequence, its proportions and patterns are pleasing to the eye. So, 
First of all, you'd have to demonstrate it was created. But what is this golden ratio and Fibonacci sequence? And where it is found in nature? Numerically, the golden ratio is represented as ratio 1 to 1.61. This ratio is also called as phi, also pronounced as phi. And here is the Fibonacci sequence. 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, and so on. Observe, in the Fibonacci sequence, each number is the sum of the two numbers that precede it. This maths lesson is moving further and further away from proving God. It's surprising to note that there are numerous examples in nature where we can find the presence of golden ratio and Fibonacci sequence. Like, in many flowers, number of petals are one of the numbers present in the Fibonacci sequence. For example, buttercups have 5 petals, the chicory 21, the daisy contains 34 petals, and so on. Note that all these numbers are present in the Fibonacci sequence. Clematis, 6 petals. Lilies, 6 petals. Passion flower, 10 petals. Were these flowers not designed then? So would that mean not everything was designed? Why would some but not all have the Fibonacci sequence used in design? Since not everything on this supposedly designed planet follows the same quote-unquote design characteristics, we can now reject this one. So, down to five. The Fibonacci sequence is also found on many fruits and vegetables. Many? But not all. Golden ratio that is 1 to 1.61 is found in various parts of the human body like the ratio of the height of an adult to the height of their navel. So? What about the height of the adult to the height of the groin? I'm way more interested in that part of the body. This really is reaching to make things fit. Golden ratio also appears in the length of the forearm to that of the hand. On observing, you can easily find the golden ratio in your fingers, on your face and many other places on the body. Many, but not all. Let's skip this repetitive rubbish. Number 2. Unbelievable complexity of the DNA code and the cell. I'm personally fascinated by this idea as I can understand how difficult it is to make the computer do any task by writing a code. You should get yourself a MacBook. <laughs> then what will you think when you find an extremely complex and long code placed inside your DNA which is found inside the nucleus of all the cells of your body? Here the point is, information comes from intelligence. Let me just jump in here. Intelligent beings, i.e. scientists, translated what was found in DNA into a code that could be understood by a wider audience. DNA isn't actually made up of letters and numbers. It's made of patterns. Done! According to researchers, they have not found any physical law by which matter itself can create information. Information cannot generate randomly. There has to be some intelligence behind it. As a computer is instructed to perform any task using binary code that is ones and zeros, in the same way the code that is placed inside DNA is written in the language of four letters A, G, T and C. Again, lack of understanding. There aren't actual letters in your body. Scientists could have used anything to represent the patterns in our DNA. They could have used shapes, numbers, animals. It just turns out that letters are the simplest because of what they represent. Though I would like my DNA code to be lion, bear, salmon, bat. These four letters, A, G, T, C, actually are four types of chemicals found in the DNA molecule. Isn't that a coincidence? It then goes on and on and on about DNA being so complex it has to be designed using special pleading, which is just irritating to listen to. Demonstrate that the DNA was created, then we can assess who created it. Saying it's made up of a code that's actually a pattern doesn't demonstrate anything. Number three. We see intelligent design of the creator in everything in the universe, whether it is living or non-living thing. All the things in the nature are designed so beautifully that it becomes almost impossible to neglect an intelligent designer behind it. The look around and everything you see is proof argument. Oh dear. If someone argues that this beautiful design is mere a coincidence or made by chance, 
Then I have a short story for him. Oh, that's me. I like a story. Suppose you are walking along a beach and suddenly you found a wristwatch on the ground. You observed that the watch is very beautiful and is perfectly designed. It has numerous intricate and small parts running in perfect synchronism. This awesome watch would remind you of the person who has designed it. The watchmaker fallacy, this old thing. The watch is complex and we know it had a designer. And because the universe is complex, therefore it must have had a designer. Oh. Rationality Rules did a great video on this, which I'll leave a link to in the description. But this is my favourite clip. First and foremost, and what single-handedly debunks the watchmaker argument, is that it's a false analogy. An analogy is a comparison between things that have similar features for the purpose of explaining a principle or an idea. And in this case, Paley insists that a comparison can be made between the complexity of a watch and the complexity of the universe, which both imply that they had a designer. However, the last step is flawed because it concludes that because two things share one quality in common, that being complexity, they must also share another quality in common a designer, when this simply cannot be logically concluded. If it could, then by using the same faulty logic, countless other absurd qualities could be attributed to the universe. For example, the watch is complex, the watch was invented in the 15th century. The universe is complex, therefore the universe was invented in the 15th century. Let's move on to the next point. Number 4. Similar designs found at the microscopic level of atoms and the planetary system is an indication of God's signature everywhere. You'd have to demonstrate that it actually was a signature rather than saying, I don't understand why all things work this way, so it must be a designer. When we look into an atom, what we see? We see many electrons revolving around the nucleus in their orbits. Not only the electrons revolve around the nucleus, but also they spin at their axis. Doesn't it closely resemble the planetary system? Closely, yes, in that the planets go around the sun, but exactly the same? No. Where planets revolve around their star while also spinning on their axis. Almost similar motion is observed at even the larger scale of galaxies. Almost again, but not exact. So how is that proof? Next! Number 5. Everything that exists must have a cause. Therefore, universe had a cause which was caused by an uncaused identity known as the God. And we're back to here. A cause is different to an explanation. Yes, things came to be, but because you can't explain it, it doesn't mean you get to just say it was a God. You'd have to demonstrate it instead of claiming it. Actually, whatever begins to exist has a cause, and the universe began to exist. Therefore, we can say that the universe had a cause. But the cause that caused the universe has to be uncaused. So it is argued that this first cause, which was uncaused, is actually the God. Or that things just always were. If a God is eternal and always was, why couldn't a universe be? Yes, we can pinpoint our local universe to a single moment, but outside of that, what if that always was? Until we know for sure, we shouldn't fill in the gaps with something that can't be demonstrated, right? I think we can leave that there. I don't think any of the proofs offered are concrete evidence for a god. So we'll have to wait until something more substantial is offered. How would you have answered these proofs? Let me know in the section below. But for now, we can skip tick this off the list as being dealt with. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. From me, the skeptic, stay safe, keep thinking logically and ask questions. Skepticism is the first step towards truth. See you next Saturday.